The American people think the reason for inflation is government spending more money. I'm sick of this stuff. Simply not true. I'm sick of this stuff. American people think the reason for inflation is government spending more money. Until the American people have the political will to stop it, that's going to continue. Now give us the will. Tell us how we get that. There's only one way you can stop inflation, and that's by having the government create less money and spend less money. We have to talk about it because the American people think the reason for inflation is government spending more money. happened to all that noise yeah yeah i think that's a very fair and accurate depiction of american fiscal policy welcome back beautiful and amazing human beings this is lukradeski here of we are change the Org. we got a lot of crazy news to get into as of course we have a full-scale conflict on our hands happening in ukraine that a lot of factors are escalating we just had statements from the major players involved in this we're going to be talking about that specifically from the statements from president Zelensky and vladimir putin what was said what does it mean and yet another peace deal was rejected what's going on we're going to be talking about that plus a lot more in this broadcast but before we do the clip that we played in the beginning of this broadcast is by at b underscore Cashy, their Twitter account is available right here. I'm going to ask them f if they have a YouTube account and link their videos down in the description below if they do. If not, check them out on Twitter. I definitely agreed with their tagline, free the market, free the world. And uh, their characterization of what's happening financially right now, I believe, hit the nail on the head, especially with the latest news from the quasi-private Federal Reserve banking system announcing that they are set to raise interest rates for the first time since 2018 as of course we are dealing with soaring inflation after the federal reserve recklessly printed money and the federal government shut down global supply chains there's also you know a lot of history of governments and big bankers printing money out of thin air that has led us to this insane situation where of course tesla prices the price of their vehicles has jumped for the second time in weeks as of course commodities have been skyrocketing supplies have been in limited availability demand has skyrocketed as the world is dealing with significant inflation pressures on raw materials logistics that are absolutely obliterating our way of life where even door DoorDash had to just announce that they're going to be refunding their drivers 10% because of their gas purchases since many of their drivers were actually losing money and not making any kind of significant profit working for them since the price of life is going up dramatically expected to go up even higher from here all the contributing factors that created this situation are only added more fuel to the fire as of course the corporate media tries to deflect and obfuscate from the true reality of this situation as just a few months ago they told you what inflation then they tried to tell you inflation was transitory then they tried to tell you inflation is good now they're trying to tell you inflation is mainly because of russia and uh, that's just a whole bunch of hooey and of course the conflict in ukraine is a contributing factor that's going to make the economy that much worse but we have to understand that this situation came from central controllers at the helm of banks and governments that have been colluding together in nefarious circumstances for the pure benefit of the multinational billionaire class and if you're an average civilian not in the private billionaire club you're going to be screwed that includes you yes many people think that they're in the middle class that they're going to be fine that they're going to be all hunky-dory here that they're a part of some kind of upper no you are fudged hard family friendly show bad really really bad you are up poops creek you got corn and peanuts flying all up in your it I digress. This as we're finding out from the European government and regulators that they have just told banks to put Russian accounts under surveillance, even if they are residents of the European Union, which uh, in my opinion is definitely a worrying development and escalation. As financially in other parts of the world, like in Canada, citizens were arbitrarily punished for legally donating to a cause which the government later deemed illegal and then has retroactively shut down people's bank accounts. 
results. All of this, as a lot of very powerful people are telling you, just trust us. Just implement a national ID system with a cashless society that, of course, allows the billionaires to control every aspect of your existence as they punish people for political donations. Yeah, no, thank you. And of course, they're going to be pushing this cashless national ID digital system on the heels of crashing the existing financial system. This from my own perspective and analysis that I've been seeing developing here for quite a long time. In my opinion, the first step is to impoverish you to make you want a new system and I think we're in the impoverishing phase where already people are feeling the full effects of being robbed financially as of course poverty is correlated not only with an uptick of crime but also the deterioration of physical mental and spiritual well-being this as young children in this country are already facing a mental health crisis and the government still arbitrarily fine and steal money from individuals and organizations for not following up they're made up ridiculous unscientific decrees that are purely meant for you to bow down to the big fat bureaucratic Beckys at the helm of government as even recently the Brooklyn Nets were fined $50,000 for allowing Kyrie Irving into a team's locker room which violates a New York City mandate and hey just as Tom Clancy says if the government's good at one thing it's definitely good at stealing your money and arresting you as of course, we have new bombshell video from Project Veritas sharing the moments where an FBI highly politicized militarized organization broke down the door on a pre-dawn raid of one of its journalists. We're going to be playing that video and talking about the significant ramifications and dangers independent media faces specifically later on today on LukeUncensored.com. This is going to be a very frank and honest discussion. We're going to be playing that video in full and getting into some other topics that, of course, we cannot get into on this particular platform. So to continue the conversation, sign up to LukeUncensored.com, where also we have apocalypse survival training, expatting, traveling, masterclasses, change media university, how to be influential online how to create your own water filters whatever you want to learn you can on of course the many master classes that are available to you only as members of lukeuncensored.com we're also going to be giving you a way to download this entire master class so you could have it on a hard drive so you could have it available for you only of course for members on LukeUncensored.com. Hope to see you there later on today. Click the link right now in the description to find out more. Now, we have to understand the reality of war is brutal. It is literal hell on earth and some of the worst actions that human beings can commit against each other. Many times, in it since civilians, journalists, and people are caught up in the mix. And sadly, some of those people risking their lives trying to show us exactly what's happening on the ground during these very tense extremely important situations are taken out themselves as we're learning about two fox news journalists that lost their lives covering the conflict in ukraine an extremely unfortunate and sad incident that should remind us how indiscriminate warfare is and just how brutal it is if this story teaches us anything is that we should be trying to de-escalate this conflict and trying to stop it to stop the further loss of innocent human beings surrounding this entire mess. But sadly, there are still some sick, twisted individuals, especially in the corporate media, as Susan Glazer of CNN and The New Yorker that publicly attacked these dead Fox News journalists sarcastically tweeting that this was a tragedy since the TV network that this cameraman died for airs, quote, alleged pro-Putin propaganda, specifically showing you how some members of the corporate media are absolutely soulless, evil, and wretched that have absolutely no shred of decency. And these are the individuals that are shaping content that shapes the minds of the American public. With individuals like this controlling what the American public thinks, you have to really start wondering what the true purpose of the corporate media really is. Now, during this conflict, we just had two major statements, one made by the president of Ukraine, the other by the president of Russia. What these men said is important, and of course, weighs in what is going to be happening next during this conflict. 
As, of course, before addressing U.S. members of Congress, Zelensky yesterday on the world stage said that Ukraine will not be joining NATO and that through this saga, the president of Ukraine has realized who their true friends are. All of this as Kiev becomes more encircled by Russian troops, as their populations are dealing with more bombardments, shelling, and attacks on their country. But the president of Ukraine struck a different tone when addressing members of Congress just recently, where, of course, he appealed to emotions, highlighting and playing a video, specifically showing very disturbing photos and videos of the reality of war, and then invoking Pearl Harbor, Martin Luther King, and the events that happened in New York City in 2001, as he, of course, tried to galvanize the American public and its government representatives to, of course, be more involved in this conflict and to help him and his country out. Specifically telling Congress to do more as he asked the United States to shut down the skies of Ukraine, implement a no-fly zone, which, of course, realistically would start a conflict between the United States and Russia, further escalating this and only endangering more lives. His speech was met with a standing ovation from the U.S. members of Congress. What will be their actions from here after this emotional plea? Well, we're going to be talking about that in just a little bit, but the president of Ukraine has also asked for defense systems and fighter jets if the U.S. Congress doesn't decide to implement a no-fly zone, a.k.a. a global conflict between Russia. All of this as Ukraine has just rejected a Russian peace deal that was proposed to them, which offered a solution which would essentially make them neutral like Sweden. But Ukraine says that they did not have enough guarantees that international forces will prevent future attacks. As of course, just a couple days ago, there was a plan by the United States to send in Polish fighter jets into the region, which Poland wanted to be replenished by the United States. The United States said that they would replenish it. Poland said that there wasn't enough guarantees that they would do this. And then essentially they were left around standing, questioning each other. And so far, because of the European Union and because of this kerfuffle, Poland and the United States have not sent in fighter jets to Ukraine. And what will they do in the future? Well, who knows? As we're also getting information that the president of the United States is considering giving switchblade tank eliminating kamikaze drones to the Ukrainians as part of a new arms package that will be delivered to them, which would, of course, only significantly escalate the situation. All of this as Ukrainian refugees are, by the way, being turned away from the southern border of the United States, as right now, Biden is deciding to be tough on the southern border out of nowhere. This after, of course, letting in hundreds of thousands of people into this country indiscriminately, and now that the Ukrainians are at the border, he's deciding to stiffen his policy. Interesting. Now, whatever the United States does, particularly to arm Ukraine, send more weapons into this region, it will definitely be seen as an escalation from the president of Russia that just addressed his nation as he detailed to the Russian public about his country's involvement, the latest developments that's happening on the ground, and of course, also significantly talking about what he says were biological agents found by the Russian military in Ukrainian labs, which he says, quote, the U.S. and Ukrainians were experimenting on the global sickness of cholera, African pig, and other deadly lethal experiments. And whether he's telling the truth here or not, who knows? He has yet to present any evidence on the world stage showing and highlighting this. And when or if he does, we of course will be covering it here on this independent channel, no matter what the circumstances, as of course there has been a full PR push even denying the existence of these biological laboratories and inside of Ukraine that were financed by the U.S. Pentagon that, according to U.S. government sources, were biological threat reduction programs that were meant to, quote, study pathogens and prevent outbreaks. Where have I heard that one before? Oh, yeah. Wuhan. Sorry to be a little skeptical there. Now, a lot of the details surrounding this situation are still extremely murky. There's a lot of theories. There's a lot of speculation here. And before jumping to conclusions, I'm going to wait to see what information comes out of this. As, of course, this was not the only thing that the president of Russia brought up as he shifted responsibilities on the financial concerns 
concerns and problems that the Russian people are facing as a responsibility of the Western sanctions put against them. Specifically, specifically going even as far as to say that the West's attempt to have global dominance is, quote, coming to an end and that these quote economic blitzkriegs of sanctions against the russian people will quote only strengthen moscow and then specifically saying and i quote here scum traders russians will spit them out like a midge that flew into their mouths some people say that the statement was very bombastic to say the least some people have commented that putin does not look like he's in the best of health during this speech and i think the most noteworthy statement was that american dominance is coming to quote an end according to him and let's be frank here his statements were not very optimistic for potential of de-escalation here there definitely seem to be a decoupling of the west and the east this is significant this is of course something that we should be paying attention to as of course this conflict in ukraine has far reaching ramifications for everyone involved in this world now also very interestingly according to putin he is insisting that his military operation is quote going along to plan a lot of people have questioned his plan a lot of people are also speculating that he is significantly losing a lot of military hardware and manpower in this specific region some people are speculating that he has sent in team b but it's also worth noting that russia does face a very significant population crisis crisis and has already started drafting in troops from Siberia and the Pacific as well as Syrian and other mercenaries to fight alongside of them inside of Ukraine and with the fog of war who knows what to believe in anymore as of course this conflict is escalating more tanks more military hardware is being sent into the region and we could definitely expect this situation to only escalate from here as even Russian state television is talking about Russia invading the NATO Baltic states and forcing Sweden to declare neutrality and with such bombastic moves with also the involvement of the Chinese who as of right now are, are not supporting the Russians militarily but are being threatened by the United States in order not to do so. All of this as the United States has just moved 3,000 troops to Australia as of course the rhetoric is heating up between China and the United States states so yeah overall disastrous situation what do you think is happening on the ground in ukraine are the russians being absolutely obliterated having major losses absolutely significantly failing many of their military objectives or is everything going according to plan of what the russians are trying to do here what do you think let me know down in the description below otherwise i still think it's important to call this an international crap show with some very serious financial ramifications that of course you're going to have to be dealing with that only make the massive money printing that has been done by the federal bankers that much worse of a situation for you your family members in the future of this country let's call a spade a spade here things are not looking good hope you guys are prepared i got one more video coming your way on lukeuncensored.com i also provided some very interesting perspective on this entire situation in this video i got this right finally i got my time i used to go here with this video which you can watch right now and learn more about this developing situation which i think is crucial to understand i wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you watching and sharing this video this is why i love you guys stay tuned for more here on wearechange.org